You have heard of little Moses in the bulrush. You have heard of fearless David and his slain. You have heard the story told of dreaming Joseph and of Joseph and the well you often see. There are many, many others through the Bible. I should like to meet them all, I do declare. By and by the Lord will surely let us meet them at that meeting in the air. Oh, there is going to be a meeting in the air, in the sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard my mortal ear. Will be glorious, I do declare. And God's own Son will be the leading one at that meeting in the air. Many things will there be missing in that meeting, for the mortals bench will have no place at all. There will never be a sermon preached to sinners, for the sinner had refused to heed the call. There will be no mourning over wayward loved ones. There will be no lonely nights of pleading prayer. Our burdens and our anguish will be lifted at that meeting in the air. Oh, there is going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you over there in the home on the sky such singing you will hear never heard my mortal ear will be glorious I do declare and God's own son will be the leading one at that meeting in the air there the doubters will be missing all together all the skeptics will be absent on that day there will be no grumblers present to disturb us And the ancients will be busy far away There will saints will have their seal upon their forehead Dressed in rape, no one knows like enough to wear All who have the wedding garments will be present At that meeting in the air Oh, there is going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by I am going to meet you Meet you over there in that home Beyond the sky Such singing you will hear Never heard my mortal ear Will be glorious I do declare And God's own Son Will be the leading one At that meeting in the air Oh, there is going to be Meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you over there in the home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard my mortal ear. Will be glorious, I do declare. And God's own son will be the leading one at that meeting in the of you stand we'll go to prayer tonight before we go any farther in this service things are well we all understand things are a little different this is the biggest fellowship and church in the country but we'll have to postpone it for just a bit we'll get back there eventually but uh, anybody have an outspoken repair request remember Tom and Janice Bennington uh, they was called and checked on this week and uh uh, Tom has fallen a lot, and Janice is still sick, and they're both, they're both in poor health. They need they need God's touch. And uh, yeah, yes, how sad that was. Very sad. Yeah, uh, Josh and Amy's boy had uh, emergency surgery today on his appendix, so. 
think he's doing okay and on their way home, I think. So, uh, anybody else? Yeah, Ralph. Ralph. Remember this service tonight, and good to have our pastor back and able to preach, and uh, uh, looking forward to hearing him in a little bit, and those will be singing. Just pray that God has his way in this service. I'm sure we all got someone in our heart by an upraised hand. Just all lead out and go to the Lord in prayer. Put your faith into one pair of hands. These hands are so strong, so when life goes wrong, put your faith into one pair of Put your faith into one pair of hands, one pair of hands. Into the air, words lost on a breeze. Some just see teardrops fall into the floor. Just a waste of time, not anything more.
peace With trouble all around He calmed the storm in me
over through the wind and the rain Who kept you safe at the enemy's gate? Who was your shield on the firing line? Who gave you victory? Who turned the tide? If it had not been the Lord who was on our side When the world rose against us When the tide rose high When the battle was lost And we drowned in the dark We would be in despair If it had not been the Lord Who was your help when all your friends had gone? Who stood by your side, never left you alone? Who held your body, who spoke to your storm? And who made a way out of a dead end road? If it had not been the Lord who was on our side When the world rolls against us, when the tide rolls high When the battle was lost and we drowned in the dark We would be in despair if it had not been the Lord If it had not been for mercy If it had not been for grace If it had not been for the one who took our place If it had not been for power If it had not been for love If it had not been for Jesus and His precious blood If it had not been for mercy If it had not been for grace if it had not been for the one who took our place If it had not been for power If it had not been for love If it had not been for Jesus and His precious love If it had not been the Lord who was on our side When the world rolls against us When the tide rolls high When the battle was lost Then we drowned in the dark We would be spirit here tonight and it's like a grateful spirit because we had something taken away from us that we wasn't expecting and that was our worship and we got it back tonight and it feels pretty good don't it so help your pastor as he comes and preaches pastors thing for the focus every month I always put greetings Beach Fork family and uh, I feel like that that's what we are here is family and uh, when one's hurting we're all hurting and we rejoice when you rejoice <laughs> and those are our little girls <laughs> we thank God for it I I know that, uh, I don't know if it's cause I bend down that made me emotional or what, but I'm kind of a big squall baby right now. But I read that on Facebook this morning when I, when I got on there and seen that uh, the, the little thing that you had that said that uh, they're forever kids now. <laughs> they're gonna be theirs. It just, uh, uh, it done something to me. I couldn't help it. It tore me up, you know. I was glad to see that for them and, uh, and uh, we do love these little girls. There's a lot of sad things going on in America right now, and uh, I'm glad we don't have to be part of it. You know, uh, uh, we've been seeing some things on the news that's disturbing, and uh, how that there's some bad policemen, just like there's bad everything else, you know. Does that mean all cops are bad? No, it don't. <laughs> it does not. It absolutely does not. And I know we don't always see the whole story. I know how that works too. We've heard about fake news. We know that we just see sometimes what they want us to see. But there's some things that I've seen in the last few days that's been disturbing, that people got things that they didn't deserve. And uh, when a man can't breathe, you need to let him up, you know, or at least let him breathe or whatever. 
And there's, of course, it stirs up all kind of racial things. But I'm glad in the family of God, he don't see black, he don't see white, he don't see red, or he don't see any other color. But we're all his children today. And I feel like that there's definitely no place in the church for that. And I hope that I've never seen it here. And you know, I realize, I realize where we're raised. I'm, I do. You don't see very many black people out here, very many black kids, black uh, anybody. But you all don't make any difference who comes into the service. We got some black ones, we got some brown ones, we got some in between. And we are just thankful for all of them tonight. And that God sent them our way. I just, uh, Doug mentioned it right there. You know, I've heard all my life uh, preachers preach and different ones say there will come a day when we won't be able to gather and worship like we have always done. Now, in my lifetime, Fred, we've never seen that. We've always, always came together, always been able to worship. I mean, it might snow too much one day or, or uh, the lights go out and electric be off or something that kept us from having church, but we've never had a time that we wasn't able to come and meet and worship the Lord. And uh, so I've had people criticize me both ways now. Some said I shouldn't ever quit having church and uh, that they may be right, I don't know. I done what I prayed on my knees and spent a lot of hours praying and, and asking God the right way to go. Beach Fork uh, Church. It's, you know, I'm not king here and I don't run it as a kingdom or anything, but we have a board and we try to bring everything that we do before the board and ask for their approval. And then if they approve it, then we usually ask for your approval, you know, on most things, unless it's something we don't need all that. But I've tried to do it the way that I felt was best, the way the Lord led me to do it. And uh, some of them said now, of course, I've had the people now criticize me the other way. I went back too soon. I shouldn't be back in, in church. And so far, you all are really being good. <laughs> you're, you're really being good tonight uh, and trying to behave yourself. So I do appreciate that. We are a church that uh, some of them, now listen, social distancing for me really was not a big problem. I mean, I love all of you, and I don't mind hugging people, you know, but I just soon really people stay out of my face when they're talking to me, give me my space, you know. <laughs> That's just how I am. I, was, I reckon I took it after grand, my granddad Sam. He didn't like people in his face either. So that may be where I got that. I don't know. But uh, I'm okay with that part, you staying six feet away. I can, I can hear you pretty good at six feet and all that, but uh, I know there's some of you love to hug, and it's hard on you not to be able to. And if you're huggers, but uh, I think that this thing, the Lord's going to take care of us one way or another. We'll either get a vaccine, and there's all kind of stuff going on about that too. I've already heard, oh, they're wanting to put a chip in you and all this. Now, I've been vaccinated for smallpox, and I don't know what all when I was a kid. You know, several different things. They come and stuck me and gave me shots for. And I was vaccinated for a lot of different things, and I wasn't old enough to care. I didn't like getting stuck, but I didn't, you know, I was all right with that. Now, I don't know what this thing's going to amount to, but they are starting to talk about putting chips in people, and I don't have a problem with a vaccine, but I do have a problem right now, at least, with the chip till I know more about it, because I know how that falls in line with the Bible. You say, is this the mark of the beast? I don't know that. I really don't think it is, but I think it's leading up to it. It's just getting us used to the dark and getting us in place to where they can slip that right in here, folks. So that's not the message tonight. I had an encouraging message, I thought. I wasn't going to get into all that. But this is our first service back in, uh, in the church since COVID-19 happened and started in this country and that we've been able to gather like we are tonight. And we may have to move Wednesday night to the dining hall, and I hope we do. That'll be a wonderful thing. But we want to try to social distance, and I thought, well, we won't have that big a crowd. It'll be easy to do. We just about got this place full tonight. So, uh, I mean, as far as facing, <laughs> that's good. Thank God. So if we have to have Wednesday out there, we will. Uh, but uh, the reason we were trying to separate buildings is for sanitary purposes to have a time. But now they're saying they change the rules on us every day or two. Now they say this thing really don't linger on surfaces as long as they thought, and it 
probably is a lot harder to catch off the surfaces than they thought. And uh, so next week, we don't know what the new rules will be, but right now we're doing our best to, to follow what the CDC has put forward. Uh, my message tonight, if you want to turn to Proverbs, I'm going to read a few verses of Scripture in chapter 30 of the book of Proverbs. I do want to say this. Through this time, we have not missed a whole lot of church. We've had, we've had some young preachers that's came here and preached for us on Wednesday nights and singers that's came and sang for us and people have recorded it. Some of them recorded it on their phone. Some of it we put on Facebook Live. Brenda has been here and recorded services and put them on our Beach Fork website. And we just thank the Lord for all those people who made that happen. I'm lucky just to make a phone call on my phone, so uh, I'm, I appreciate people can, can use this technology the way they have. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, do you know that it is natural for a man to seek God? Do you understand what I'm saying? I am a firm believer that in every man born on the face of this earth, that there is a longing born within that man that he has a desire to seek God. And this scripture I want to read you, let me, let me just put this out here. The first, first six verses of the 30th chapter of Proverbs. The words of Agur, the son of Jacob, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithiel, and even unto Ithiel and you, Cal, surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the holy. So just from those verses, you know this isn't Solomon that wrote this in the book of Proverbs here. This is this other fella. But let me go on with it. He said, who hath ascended up into heaven then? He's asking us a question now. Who hath ascended up into heaven? Or who descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? If thou canst tell me. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Boy, there's some good stuff in that right there. What this is all about, this man, Agur, Started out, he was seeking God. Now, folks, I'll tell you what's going on here, by the way. I try not to get carried away and jump over the altar. I was doing great from my surgery, and I was off of the walker, and I was on a cane, and really could get around without a cane. And I, Saturday, thought that I, my daughter had my pickup, my wife had her other car, and the only thing left was that little sports car we got. Well, I put the sunroof back, I had the windows roll down. It was 85 or 90 degrees. And I was rolling down the road with my radio up, feeling like a young man driving that sports car <laughs> until I tried to get out of it. <laughs> and then I had problems. <laughs> so I think that's what i done to my hip. I strained it trying to get out of that thing. And I've been hobbling around. So don't get excited if you see me limping or whatever. I got my walker here. and We'll make it through this. But this man, as he was giving us this word right here, he was seeking for God. He said, I'm not a learned man. I don't, I'm, I'm not a wise man. I'm not like Solomon wrote most of this book. But I'm brutish more than most of you. I, and I thought when I read this, this suits me pretty good. Because I'm not a real learned man. You know, I'm a logger. I know where I come from. And you can send a logger to college and put a suit and tie on him. And that does not make him a preacher. I found that out a long time ago. Uh, you know, I know who I am, I know where I came from. But I also know that God gave me enough sense, Freddie, to realize that one place in my life, I needed a savior. I realized enough to, to know that I couldn't do this thing on my own. And I went out trying to find a lot of other ways to bring me satisfaction or to bring me happiness in this world. Now some of you never went too far. I was young, I, I started at a young age trying to find something to satisfy the longing I had down in here. And I tell you, I traveled a lot of places, done a lot of things, Eddie, looking for satisfaction. I thought, you know, this or that would bring it, whatever. I always thought of, you know, I love cars, and I thought when I get this certain car, that'll be it. I got the car I wanted. I went in debt, borrowed the money, and got the car I wanted. <laughs> and uh, 
It was great for a little while, but you know what? It wasn't long to That wasn't it. Here I was a young teenager with a new car, but I didn't, it didn't bring no satisfaction, Carla. I still had a longing inside. This man right here searched for something to bring him satisfaction. He still had a longing inside, but he got down to the realization of something. He said, who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who's done all these things? Who's bound the waters in a garment? Who's established all the ends of the earth? What's his name? What's his son's name? Well, he didn't know. <laughs> but I'm glad to tell you something tonight. I know who that one is that has held this earth in his hands and have formed it out. He took his hands and cupped out the seas in this world. And he told the ocean how far it could go and where it could come back to. I'm glad I know the name of the one today that done that. And I know his son tonight as my personal savior. And his name is Jesus Christ. I'm thankful tonight that I know who he is. Every word of God is pure, it says there in verse five. Right now, during this pandemic, there's been one elected official after another who's got on television and gave us their reports and their updates daily, some of them. And I've heard one another saying, we believe in science and we're gonna follow science and whatever science tells us to do, that's what we're gonna try to do for our state. And that's what they use to... to give us the reason for shutting down everything going on. So we've shut down most of our economy. You know, there was a few things they decided was essential and they let some of us stay open, gas stations, grocery stores, places of, with carry out food and all that was deemed essential and they let us stay open there but they closed down everything else and they told us, they didn't make us close the churches but they highly recommended we did and there was some of them, they did go in and make them close down because they wasn't following orders like they should have or whatever. And they said, we're gonna follow science. And even a commercial, I mentioned this in another message, they stated that we can count on, one thing we can count on today is science to bring us answers. You know what I say to that? Fooey. <laughs> Fooey on all that. Now, science is good, and we do depend on them for our medicines and for all that stuff, but I'm here to tell you something. They haven't even figured out where man comes from yet. I mean, I went to school for a while, you know. I was in, in grade school. We had the theory of evolution that they started teaching us, and they told us how man was formed. They said, we come from monkeys, and they showed pictures of monkeys. Well, they found some more stuff after I got a little older. Well, then they said, no, we actually come from a single cell, come out of the ocean, it was a tad, like a tadpole. And he got swimming around and started staying on the land more than he did in the water and he lost his tail and he got legs and he started jumping. He was a frog again. And then the next thing you know, he got to looking up in the trees and things for his food and he started walking on his back legs. Well, then he, he was more like a monkey after that, you know, and then he started swinging in trees. I don't, I don't know, you know, they've changed this thing about a half a dozen times in my lifetime. I went to college and they taught me something else then, you know, because they found some more things. Well, then they found out one of the Cro-Magnum man or whatever that they had formed one of their guys and showed us a picture in the book when they, when they went from a tadpole up to a monkey to a man, you know. And you remember seeing how they done that in them books? Well, they found out that one of them guys, the jawbone that they took, that they, they took a piece of a jawbone and made a man and drawed a picture, an artist did, and, decided that's what he looked like. Well, they found out it wasn't even a human jawbone. It come from some other animal altogether. So that shot that theory. They had to change it again. So why I'm saying all this is science changes every day. But the word of God, I read you in verse five, every word of God is pure. I am glad tonight that I've got something right here that I can stand on it has been the same ever since I was a little boy. It's the same word that took my grandfather to heaven. It's the same word that sent my mama to the other side. And I'm following the same word that my old pastor Deb Evans stood up here and preached to you from. I'm still preaching from the same book, Freddie, and it hasn't changed. And I got news for you, it never will change. It's gonna stand forever and forever because God's word is pure tonight. 
Science changes their mind every few years. Genesis 1, 1 said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In verse 26 of that same chapter, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Verse 27 said, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Now, how many of you know what that means? Did, that, did any of that go over your head? Male and female, he created them. He told them to be fruitful and multiply. That's the way God made us. That's the way God intended it to be. And uh, you know, it didn't say uh, man and man, he created them because you all know that don't work today. They couldn't be fruitful and multiply. Not one scientist. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God, Freddie. Hallelujah. The word of God's pure. Amen. Science has got its place. And I'm not gonna be stupid and throw all that out. We're social distancing. We're wearing our masks. The ones of you here together tonight, a lot of you are wearing masks and, and that's all good. And there's, but you know there's not one scientist tonight that can add one inch to his height or one minute to his life. But it's only God that holds that in his hand tonight. I'm gonna put my trust in my heavenly Father and in the Word of God tonight and not in what some scientist is telling me because he'll change tomorrow. <laughs> so you can hook up mechanical breathing apparatus on a man and you can make him breathe after life has left his body. They do it every day. And they can leave you hooked up and it'll, it'll make your heart pump, it'll make you breathe. But if the Spirit of, has already left out of that man, there's nothing they can do to bring him back ever. Only God has that power. His word is pure, I read you. Then verse six says, the words of the Lord are pure words. This is Psalms 12, six. said, the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of the earth, purified seven times. Psalms 18.30 says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all who trust him. That leads us into the next part of that verse five. He says, he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. He's a shield to them that put their trust in him. Genesis 15, one said, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, fear not Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Deuteronomy 33, 29 said, the shield of thy help. Psalm 33, 20 says, our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Now, let me tell you something. Do you have any clue what the shield was for? <laughs> One thing was to yield off the fiery darts of the enemy. The shield was used to protect us, to ward off the enemy. I'm gonna tell you today, the enemy is coming I believe that God's people, I'm not gonna go tell you all my sad stories, but there's all kind of things that came our way just today. And you think it's any accident since we were planning on coming back to the house of God to worship tonight, and since God had me, since I was on schedule to preach tonight, and God had given me a message, I feel like a message of hope, a message of truth to give you tonight. It's no wonder me and my wife was talking about it. That's exactly why the enemy was throwing things our way. You think it's some strange thing that I'm back hobbling around again? He didn't want me up here preaching, Freddie. I may have to have him wheel me up here in a wheelchair. I don't know before it's over, but I am gonna mind God tonight and try to give you what he's laid on my heart. He's our shield tonight. His word is our guiding light. He's in Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Now, back in Bible days, a lot of you men would like to live then because the women done about all the work. <laughs> they did. They went out. They gathered the food in out of the gardens and things, and you know, out of the fields, and brought them in. And a lot of times they would they would carry the water. Uh, they watered the animals a lot of time. They done a lot of the work. The women did. And uh, when we were over in Israel, we got to see some of that. They still carry the water pots up on their head. A lot of them. And we were going down through one of the paths that they walked through, and it went down through a tunnel, Everett, and it was dark all the way down these steps leading down, and they were just hewn steps hewn out of the stone. 
And this thing was just like going through a cave, basically, is what we were doing. But they made steps down so they could get down to where the water was. And our guide told us, he said, it brought this scripture to mind. A lot of the women would put little candles on their feet and tie them to their feet as they were walking because they carried everything with their hands and up on their head. And as they would walk, those little candle light that they had were the light unto their feet. And that, he said that's what that brought to mind to him when he read this scripture. Thy word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. I'm glad if we follow the word of God, Freddie, we'll never be in darkness. But we are gonna be led by the light of his word tonight. He will let you know when you're right in the center of his will. He will let you know when you get out of his will. And if we measure up to what the word of God says, I'm not too worried about what everybody else thinks about it. I wanna make sure I line up with what the word of God says tonight. We won't be left to wonder in darkness if we follow the word. You wanna know how to treat your wife tonight? It's right in the word of God. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave his life for her. Women, you wanna know how to treat your husbands? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You don't need to be wandering around worrying about every man you see on the street or out on some movie screen, but submit yourself to your own husband. <clears throat> Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it might be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. You want to live a, young, a long life, young people? You want to have a good life? Want it to be well with you? Then you honor your father and mother. Do what the word of God says. Thank God. That's right. Parents, Ephesians 6, 4 said, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. You teach them what the word of God says. You treat them like the word of God says. You teach them to treat other people like the word of God says. And if you do that, you're gonna have some good kids. And finally, Ephesians 6, 10 through 13 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, stand. <laughs> Thank God. I can't give you a more encouraging word right now tonight. If you will stay within the lids of this Bible and you follow what the word of God says, I'll guarantee you there may be times that you're gonna come up against some wickedness in this world. We got some wicked leaders in our country today. Don't think everybody's out for the good of America or for the good of you and me or even to see God uplifted in this country. We was founded up on the right principles, folks. America was founded up on the right principles, but everybody's not looking out for those like our founding fathers did. I want them to tell you something. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but we're wrestling against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness <laughs> of this world. So... He told us then what to do. He said, have your feet shod with the gospel. I'm trying to tell you about that tonight. The word of God, this gospel right here, the, the, talking about Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection, that is the gospel. And the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Did you notice everything I mentioned there is for defense except one thing? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's our weapon against the enemy. When Satan comes around and he starts telling you that you're just wasting your time, there's no truth to this thing. You know, why is your neighbor down the road not having any problems? He don't even worry about going to church or living right. Why is everything going good for them? The enemy will stand on your shoulder and tell you all kinds of stories. He will whisper everything in your ear. But I'm here to tell you tonight that if you'll stand on the word of God, and you begin to give him some of these good old scriptures back at him. Start quoting him the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't care if I'm uh, you know, down digging up pop cans to try to find a way to make it, Freddie. I still know the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's gonna take care of my needs tonight, no matter what, if I put him first in my life. 
You say, well, does that mean you're not going to have any trouble? Apparently it don't. If everything was great, I wouldn't be on a walker tonight. I'd be skipping and jumping around like a teenager. But that ain't happening. Well, does that mean that God's got it in for me? No, that ain't what it means. I've done my best to follow him and live his word. Have I failed? Yes, I have. Have I always done the right thing? No, I can't say as I have. I've fell short many times, Everett. But I know this much. He never one time ever left me in the dark, Mark. When I would fall short of what he had for me, the Holy Spirit would speak to me right then and there. And he would let me know that I was not heading the right direction, Eddie. He would let me know that I needed to do an about face and turn back to him. And I've always tried to listen to that sweet Holy Spirit when he spoke to me and make sure that I travel the way he's leading me, Freddie, and follow the Spirit of God. And if we do that, I'm telling you, his word, it's pure tonight. It won't lead you wrong. And it will be a shield to you tonight. He will keep his hands up around you and his arms around about you and shield you tonight from the darts the enemy's got. Thank God I'm thankful tonight for the word of God. I'm thankful tonight that I know the one who did create this earth and, and who done all those things that I read to you about a while ago. I'm glad I know him as my savior tonight. Thank God. And you can know him too. I don't know where you stand with the Lord tonight, but if you're here, and you're lost as we stand to our feet. Jeff, come on to the piano, buddy.